Hello colleagues, welcome to another video. Today we are going to learn how to make a precast concrete scupper. To do that, we are going to start with a metric generic uh, model. Um, in that model, we are going to parameterize all the sizes of this element to be able to get different types. Once we have that, we are going to move forward to the second part of the video. And in that part, we are going to insert our element into a face based model. And this is going to allow us to create a void into the insertion element to control the depth of insertion and also to choose the type that we are going to use in our projects. So let's start. We are going to create a metric generic model that is going to be the canvas for shape. So the first thing that we need to do is to understand what parameters we need to create different uh, types of the same shape. So we are going to use three groups. The first group are going to be the overall dimensions, height, width, and length. The second group is going to be the thickness, thickness of the base and thickness of the sides. And the third group is going to be this dimension and this dimension, that there are the two dimensions that give us, as a result, this chamfer. So once we understand that, we can start creating our parameters. All we are going to start creating all the parameters are filling, filling them with uh, the dimension of a normal, normal scatter. So the first thing is going to be the height. Um, the height of a normal scatter is 115 uh, millimeters. The second parameter is going to be the width. Remember to put the numbers at the beginning to understand the groups. And the width is going to be 150 and to complete um, the first group, we are going to have the length. And the length of this is going to be 250. Okay, perfect. Let's put it into no in order. We are going to create the first parameter of the second group. That is going to be the, ba the base thickness. The base thickness, in this case, is going to be 25. We are going to use, we are going to create the side thickness. In this case, it's going to be 25 also. And now we're going to start with the third group. That is going to be the two dimension that give us as a result, the chamfer. In the front, we are going to have 50. And the second parameter is going to be in the chamfer top B. That is going to be 170. 70. Okay, perfect. So we can understand that looking at the 3D. We are going to create different types, so don't worry about the dimensions. This is to understand how it's going to be the process. Okay, now we need to start placing all of reference planes, understanding all the parameters that we need to, to achieve. So this reference plane, is going to be the width and we are going to create another that is going to be the thickness of the sides this is going to be one of the parameters to get the chamfer and this is going to be on um, the parameter of the length so we can start applying all the parameters let's look this is going to be the length perfect this is going to be the chamfer top. Perfect. Remember for the width to create the equidistant parameter. And we are going to apply the width. Now let's first to apply the thickness of the sides. Sightings, perfect. And now we can apply the width. Great. So we have some parameters already in place and we are going to go to the front and we are going to create more reference planes. This reference plane is going to be the total height. This reference plane is going to be one of the dimensions for the chamfer and this reference plane is going to be the thickness of the base. So let's start applying. This is going to be the thickness of the base. 
perfect. This is going to be one of the dimensions for the chamfer. And from bottom to the top, this is going to be the total height of our piece. Great. So we already have all the parameters in place and we need to start um, creating our shape. We are going to create extrusion. We are going to set one of the planes at the right. We're going to choose the right. Perfect. And we are going to <clears throat> start drawing. Remember, we are going to create the chamfer with these dimensions, ref level, and now we're going to look, lock this shape to the parameters that we already, to the reference planes that we already have. Perfect. So now we're going to create another extrusion at the left. Perfect. And we're going to copy the same shape. Great. Let's go again to the reference level. We're going to lock to our reference planes. That's great. So let's take a look to the 3D. Shaded. It's, it's going great. Let's take a look at the 3D. Yeah, it's perfect. So we just need to add the main part. We are going to create a rectangle. And let's go at the front so we can lock it to our reference planes. That's great. Let's go to the view. Okay, and now we are going to join all pieces because this is going to be a unique piece. And voila, we have our precast concrete scatter. This is going to be <clears throat> the number two type and now I'm going to create uh, three more for the for the next part of the video. Okay, perfect. We already have all the type that we need. Let's take a small look. We have the number one, the number two, the number three, and the number four. I took all the dimension from a local supplier. So remember that we need to uncheck the always vertical and we need to check the work plane base. This is going to give us uh, more control of the um, element for the second part of the video. So I hope you are enjoying the tutorial and let's move forward to the second part. We are almost there. To start the second part of the video, we are going to create another family, but this time it's going to be a generic model face base. This is going to allow us to create a void into the insertion element, that this will be the insertion element for the example. So let's go to the from view and now we are going to load the element that we already created, the precast concrete scupper, and we are going to place it here. So now we are going to use, let's say, two parameters for this family. The main parameters is going to be the parameter that is going to allow us to change the type of this element. If you try to create uh, this parameter from scratch, you can get some errors like in the data type. So I always advise you to create it from here. You can add the parameters. You can see that the data type is already in place, the correct one. So we are going to um, have a bright just type. Perfect. We can take a look if it's working. Number three. Yeah, great. It's working. Number one. It's great. And, and the second parameter is going to be the insertion depth. We are going to create a reference plane, add a dimension, and we are going to create another parameter. This is going to be the depth of insertion. Perfect. Now we can lock our family into the wall. Let's move it a little bit. And we are going to center of element. Let's go to the rough level. Yeah, it's in the correct position. Let's look at here too. And now we can create the void. Let's go here, void, void extrusion. We are going to set the plane face that we are going to base our model. 
we are going to select a rectangle and it's going to go around our element. We have to lock it. So every time we change the type, the void is going to change. Okay. So let's go to the 3D. Something is happening. It's, it's, it's not cutting the, the face, but why? Because when we work with voids, we need to cut the, the element, cut the element. So let's go to cut, click here. Okay, perfect. So we can see now that this is cutting in a shaded. Perfect. It's working. It's working great. <clears throat> but now we need to create our types because this is another family. So we can go here and start creating our types. We are going to have the N1 with the N1 element. Perfect. We are going to have the N2. Sorry. With the N2 type. We are going to have N3. And we are going to have N4. So now we can choose different types and also we can um, modify the parameter of depth of insertion. So we are ready in position to save it and start using it into our projects. Let's save it. This is going to be the precast concrete scupper dynamic. Perfect. So let's try it. Okay, finally we can try our scupper. So we are we have here a wall into an architectural project. The wall have a face, so let's try it. Let's go to component, load the family, precast concrete scupper, and let's place it into the face. It's working perfect. As you can see, we create a void into the wall and we can adjust the depth of insertion. Let's go to level zero. Uh, we cannot see it here. Level one, yeah. The wall, the thickness of the wall is 120. So let's change that parameter to make it flush. And yeah, it's working great. As you can see in the 3D, it's flush with the wall. So you have plenty of control of this uh, piece. But let's say that you want a bigger one. So we can go and select the number two. And the void is going to increase with our, um, our element. We need to, uh, we need to edit again the, sorry. We need to edit again the depth of insertion, 120. And as you can see, it's flash again. So it's working great. I hope you uh, enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, just leave it in the comment. And if you, if you want any advice of the topic of the next tutorial, just leave a comment. See you guys.